After humans, the most widespread creature in the world lives in every ocean, from coastal shorelines to the tropics, poles, and endless deep expanses. It's had many names over the centuries, blackfish, grampus, whale killer. While many creatures compete for food in the seas, the orca is the top dog. Their Latin name, Orcanus orca, comes from Orcus, god of the underworld and death, fitting their fierce hunting reputation. They are the top predator of the ocean, eating fish, seals, sea lions, humpback whales, and great white sharks. What they hunt and how they hunt distinguish them from other animals. Orcas chase great white sharks in packs and hit their sides. The blow stuns the shark, allowing the orca to hold it upside down, paralyzing and drowning it. Orcas don't just eat sharks, they carefully remove and eat only the livers, almost surgically. Great whites are so afraid of orcas that if they escape, they will leave their hunting grounds for a year. Antarctic orcas pack together to make waves to wash seals off floating ice. Others swim in circles around schools of fish, blowing bubbles and slapping their tails to bring them to the surface to be eaten in mass. They coordinate hunts with up to 50 people and develop new, terrifying hunting methods. Due to their military precision, hunting strategies like this have fascinated scientists for years. Orcas communicate and coordinate complex concepts. How? How do they generate so many new ideas and execute them? While many of these answers are still being discovered, research is beginning to reveal Orcas' powerful collective minds. The largest member of the dolphin family, orcas are often called killer whales. They are now the top marine predator. Their evolutionary story didn't always happen there. 50 million years ago, the Pachycetus, a wolf-sized land dweller, ate fish and other small sea creatures along a shallow ocean. Over the next 8 million years, some of its lineage slowly moved to sea, exploiting ocean resources and trading legs for flippers. In their front flippers, whales have arm, wrist, and finger bones from their land-dwelling origins, and in their vestigial pelvic bone, a remnant from when they had hind legs. With their black and white coloring and massive size, orcas are one of the most famous ocean animals. Males can grow to 9 meters and weigh 10 metric tons, like a school bus. They can move their massive bodies through the water at incredible speeds. An orca's cylindrical body tapers at each end for hydrodynamics. The orca is the second fastest marine mammal at 35 km h due to its shape, size, and strength. They've been seen jumping 15 feet, so don't be their target. The bite force exceeds 131 megapascals. Great white bite forces are estimated at 27.5 megapascals. Their size, speed, and terrifying jaws would likely put them at the top of the ocean food chain alone. They work with others. Orcas usually form deadly pods. The maternal group makes up the pod family. Most matrilines have a matriarch and her male and female descendants. These groups sometimes work in perfect sync, which scientists find hard to understand. Refined and complex communication may underpin this teamwork. Researchers think their vast repertoire of sounds, calls, and whistles conveys complex messages. Scientists began recording and analyzing orcas' underwater sounds in the 1970s to understand their mysterious language. First, they heard click trains. Whales use echolocation to find food and map their underwater environment. The orca breathes, and air bubbles rise up the airway from the lungs to create a click train. This makes two phonic lips slap. Their melon, or bulbous forehead, receives the clicking vibrations. Specialized fats in the melon help sound travel. The clicks form a beam in the melon. The sound is then released as high-frequency clicks that spread through the water like a flashlight. Each click lasts less than a millisecond, with frequencies from 20 to 60 kilohertz and levels over 220 decibels. Although decibels underwater are measured differently than in air, this is still extremely loud. When sound waves hit an object, some echo back to the whale. Specialized jaw fatty tissues pick up sound, and auditory nerves carry it to the middle ear and brain, where the orca uses it to create an environment picture. Killer whales can detect fish up to 500 feet away using echolocation, which they couldn't see in murky water. They can even distinguish the acoustic signatures of fish swim bladders to get their favorite. Almost exclusively, North Pacific killer whales eat Chinook salmon, which ranges over 15,000 square miles. This huge area is home to hundreds of fish species, including five salmon species that are often more abundant than Chinook salmon. Yet, orcas can target and catch specific fish. The echolocation is astonishingly accurate. Next, researchers examined orcas' whistles. 
due to their high pitch, directionality, and modulation, whistles don't travel far underwater. Whistles are narrow band tones with no or few harmonics that last up to 12 seconds at 1.5 to 18 kilohertz. Some populations have ultrasonic frequencies up to 75 kilohertz. Because whales don't travel far in water, scientists discovered that they make these sounds to communicate privately with their pod mates, which may help them coordinate attacks. Orca calls are as loud as jet engines and echo over miles of ocean. These pulse calls are killer whales' most common calls. Based on the pulse repetition rate, which is usually 0.25 to 1 kHz, they show sudden and patterned frequency shifts. Interestingly, these vocalizations are not genetically predetermined. They're learned. Calves' first vocalizations are loud, high-pitched screams that are unlike adult calls. Calves eventually learn which calls to make and when. However, scientists know that orca language is crucial for hunt coordination, but haven't yet determined its meaning. Orcas hunting herring together make incredible underwater noise. Clicks, whistles, calls, harmonic tones, and undulations occur. Due to its complexity and learned nature, scientists believe calls can communicate complex, specific information, a true language. Researchers are processing hundreds of hours of audio data from tagged animals to determine how they communicate their hunts. Scientists hope to use AI to translate whale language into ours and allow us to communicate with other species. A new AI can translate human languages without a Rosetta Stone or key. Deciphering whale language may be possible with this step. Researchers are teaching their AI to identify call types, subunits, and communication patterns. This, along with behavioral patterns, may decipher orcas' language. Other than hunting signals, orca language has another use. Language is the foundation of every orca pod's group identity, giving them cultures as rich and varied as ours. This culture, this group identity, makes them the best ocean predators. Though many orca pods live together, they can live very different lives. Coastal resident pods, like the well-studied northern and southern residents off British Columbia, live in predictable locations. The most common orcas are these, and many pods of resident orcas can live beside each other, sometimes interacting. These fish hunting pods average 14 members, but can reach 50. Transient orcas are rarer. These mysterious whales can appear in unpredictable places, staying submerged longer than residents and hugging the shore but out of sight. Transient orcas travel long distances, including between Alaska and California. Smaller transient pods, averaging three members, hunt sea lions. Resident and transient orcas do not interact. Orcas choose to live in these groups, researchers found. The 1980s were the first time researchers began to listen more closely to orca conversations under the waves, revealing how distinct these pods were. They discovered that each pod has its own dialect of calls. One group of resident orcas used calls with a low pulse rate burst and a narrow band tone that started at 3 to 5 kHz and increased to over 8 kHz. A different group of resident orcas uses a low frequency gradually rising tone, a lower pitched pulse, a sudden shift to a high frequency tone, and another low pitched burst. This is one of dozens of pod specific calls by resident orcas. Even within the same area, resident and transient orcas have much larger call differences. Compared to residents, transient whales are quiet. Without echolocation, which is common in resident pods, they forage silently. However, all transient orcas studied in the Pacific Northwest shared one call, usually used while foraging and rarely. Long, quiet, low-frequency call. Orca dialects often remain unchanged within a pod for decades, suggesting they're important for group identity. This group identity drives their unparalleled success. Cultural species behave differently from genetically determined species. The behaviors of each orca dialect vary greatly, and each group has its own traditions that allow them to hunt a specific target with a sophisticated, sometimes terrifying strategy. Perhaps Argentina's killer whales have the most bizarre tradition. Scientists were astonished when they saw it in 1985. Orcas intentionally beach themselves to catch sea lions at high tide and calm seas. The orca rides a wave like a tsunami until it grabs the unwary sea lion from the turbulent surf zone. 
Sea lions are awkward on land and when walking in shallow, turbulent water. It's usually too late to escape when they realize death is near. While grounded, the whale rocks sideways and raises its head and tail. This aligns it parallel to the beach and a wave lifts it. The whale can then swim back into deeper water and eat or share the prey with its pod. The intentional beaching technique is tricky. Orcas struggle to match their movements to the waves coming in and out. They could die if they miscalculate and get stuck. Only 13 of the 30 orcas on this coast can strand. Years of rigorous training led to this level of mastery. Young orcas practiced beaching themselves with older adults, but did not yet try to catch prey. The older orca may add seaweed to enrich training. Females always teach young orcas with great care and patience. Not all young whales survive training. Going aground and feeling their body weight out of the water scares them enough to never try again. If you master it, young orcas may wait years to catch live seals, and when they do, they need an adult to help them return to the water. This shows that hunting requires skill and parental investment to reduce risk. Though difficult, time-consuming, and dangerous, social transfer of skills like this through apprenticeship is one of the main reasons orcas are so adaptable and powerful predators worldwide. Orcas' culture is so deep that scientists believe it drives their evolution alone. Orcas are evolving due to their choices and traditions, just as some humans have evolved to tolerate lactose as cow milk has become more popular. Transient orcas are so different from resident orcas that scientists believe they'll become their own species. Culture divided them, not geography. The orca's complex culture wouldn't exist without one more ingredient. Orcas have huge brains and intelligence. Sperm whales have the largest brains, followed by orcas. It weighs 5.4 to 6 point weight keeper. But how brain size affects intelligence is unclear. While absolute size is important, scientists say relative size is more so. More brain weight may be available for more complex cognitive tasks as the brain grows. The encephalization quotient, EQ, measures this ratio and shows how small or large a species brain is compared to others with a similar body size. Orcas rank high. Humans are the largest, with an EQ of 7. The next EQ is around 4 for bottlenose dolphins. Orcas at 2.5 follow. Despite its impressive brain-to-body ratio, the orca brain is unusual in many ways due to its severe cerebral cortex wrinkling and folding. This wrinkle is gyrification. Gyrification increases total cortical nerve tissue that processes information, allowing wrinkled and folded brains to process more data faster. Toothed whales and dolphins have much higher gyrification than land mammals. The human gyroencephaly index is 2.2. 5.6 for bottlenose dolphins, also 5.7 for orcas, world's most gyrified brain. The orca's highly developed insular cortex may be its most intriguing brain structure. As part of consciousness, the insula regulates emotions like compassion, empathy, interpersonal experience, and self-awareness. This suggests that orcas are emotionally intelligent like humans, aware of others' feelings, and aware of themselves. This may be the pinnacle of animal consciousness. Researchers tested orcas in 2001. Orcas' ability to recognize their own reflection in a mirror is a test of self-awareness. This was done secretly by marking the black part of its rostrum with white ointment and the white part with dark green, then observing whether the animal reacts as if it knows the dye is on its body. Such behavior may include turning and adjusting the body to see the mirror marking. The study orcas noticed and seemed fixated on the markings. They had seen mirrors before, but the markings made them keep looking, blow bubbles at their reflection, bob your head, and stick your tongue out. All of these behaviors were unusually frequent and lasted longer than before the markings. While this is not a sign of consciousness, it is reasonable to believe that orcas have a mind like ours, can think and feel deeply, and can perceive the vast complexity of their world. The highly intelligent, dominant social species, where the young are taught difficult lessons over many years and family cares for each other, resembles us. We diverged from orcas millions of years ago, but they may be our closest relative in this world. The more we study orcas, the more complex their lives seem. Research on orca behavior seems to reveal more surprising findings each time. Another orca behavior was recently noticed and filmed. 
Orcas are known for working with other orcas, but now they've been filmed with humpback whales. Occasionally, their prey, humpback whales now help each other hunt herring shoals. Watch the Orcas vs. Humpback episode of Sea Hunters on Curiosity Stream to see this behavior in action. A new six-part series highlights the ocean's predators' surprising survival strategies using some of the most groundbreaking footage ever captured. Other episodes cover the unexpected conflict between sea lions and hyenas, dolphin gannet cooperation, and orca stranding as they snatch sea lions from the shore. This is one of many amazing Curiosity Stream series. Curiosity Stream alone is a great educational streaming platform. However, Curiosity Stream has joined us to offer a better package. Nebula is now included with Curiosity Stream. Nebula is a streaming platform created by me and other educational YouTubers. We can upload ad-free and try out new original videos here. New exclusive content for Nebula in the new year includes a real science series on human evolution and real engineering's The Battle of Britain. The bundle deal is heavily discounted for the holidays. The year-long Curiosity Stream and Nebula subscription costs 11.59. You will get both services for less than a dollar per month. 42% off the regular price. It could be a last minute Christmas gift for friends and family without the hour long post office line. Signing up is the best way to support this channel. It helps us grow and bring you new content. For this amazing deal, visit curiositystream.com slash real science. If you want to watch something else, check out our previous video on lab grown meat or real engineering's latest on the James Webb telescope's insane engineering.